Here's a check on stories we're following for you on Robin Hood Radio. A note from Jack Lindsay, Ancrumdale Neighbors Helping Neighbors Association on the federal shutdown and disorganization that has resulted in the USDA and Department of Agriculture beginning now to cause major confusion for SNAP food stamp recipients. Here is an explanation of the situation from the Regional Food Bank for recipients. Important information for SNAP recipients about your February benefits. Because of the federal shutdown, most SNAP recipients will receive their February Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program benefits early. If you received a SNAP benefit in January and were scheduled to receive SNAP in February, your February benefits may be available on your card on January 17th instead of on your scheduled February availability date. This is your entire February benefit, according to Jack. It's not an extra SNAP benefit for January. You will not get any more benefits in February, so it's important that you budget and spend your February benefit with that in mind, according to Lindsay. If you completed your recertification for SNAP benefits in January and do not receive your February benefit on January 17th, it doesn't mean that you'll not get your benefit. Your February benefit should be available on February 1st. Right now, though, currently nothing else about SNAP has changed due to the federal government shutdown. A good news out of Salisbury Bank and Trust. They've announced that they've completed their fill the basket fund drive, filling local food pantries. 14 branch offices located in Berkshire County, Massachusetts, Litchfield County, Connecticut, Dutchess, Orange, and Ulster counties in New York collected food throughout the months of November and December. Together, they were able to fill 82 and a half baskets, over 1,600 items. Branches also received cash donations totaling over $175. All items collected, including monetary contributions were donated directly to local food pantries serving each area. Dutchess County 4-H will be hosting a National Safe Tractor and Machinery Operation Program course in partnership with Reardon Briggs Lawn and Garden Equipment. We have this Registration open now for the tractor safety course. The course begins February 28th and running through March 30th. There is a cost of $50 for the course book and materials. No registration will be accepted after January 30th. The course is on a first-come, first-served basis with limited space. Email Megan Tanner, 4-H educator, at met222 at cornell.edu for more information. The Salisbury Sharon Track Committee meeting at 630 at Sharon Town Hall. The public is invited to share a community dinner, which is free, at the Millerton Presbyterian Church on Main Street on Friday from 6 till 7 p.m. In addition to the meal, there will be an opportunity to shop for free household items and clothing. The Northeast Millerton Library presents a lecture on common mistakes in estate planning. That will come up on the 17th at 6.30. Reservations are requested at 518-789-3340. More information at millertonlibrary.org. There's a holiday farmer's market, Berkshire Grown, that is happening on January 19th. Locally grown and produced foods and gifts, including fruits, vegetables, cheese, meats, breads, yarn, and more. Live music, lunch fair, and children's activities. More information, berkshiregrown.org. The Northeast Militant Library presents Hooked on Llamas with Country Quilt Farm. That'll be Saturday, 1 till 2 p.m. You can learn and get a reading of This Is Your Mama a Llama and learn about llamas and Pet a real one as well. All ages are welcome. No registration is required. Kent Library Association, the operating entity of the Kent Memorial Library, holding its annual meeting on January 19th at 2 p.m. at Kent Town Hall. The public is invited to attend. The Sharon Historical Society and Museum announces the opening of the next exhibit in the gallery at the Historical Society, the 9th Annual North Light Arts Center Student Show, January 19th until March 8th, the opening reception on Saturday from 5 until 7 p.m. A broad variety of artworks by students of all ages, drawings, pastels, watercolors, acrylic, and oil paintings representing a wide range of subject matter. The Sharon Historical Society and Museum on Main Street in Sharon. Hours are Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, noon to 4, and Saturday from 10 till 2. More information is available at SharonHist.org. 
The Amenia Fire Company will sponsor its monthly all-you-can-eat breakfast Sunday from 7.30 to 11 at the Firehouse on Mechanic Street. $8 for adults, children, and seniors, $7. The menu includes pancakes, French toast, omelets, eggs any style, toast, hash browns, bacon, sausage, and beverages. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgan's at the Interlaken, interlakenin.com, and by Salisbury Bank, salisburybank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 141.57 to 24,207.16. The Nasdaq strikes off today at 7,034.69, and the S&P 500 at 2616.10. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.